Thank you for coming and uh, being with us tonight. We've been looking at the subject of the tribulation because what we wanted to do is try to zero in on something that would give us uh, just a little bit of uh, all the types of prophecy that we see in the Bible. And so we were talking about uh, tribulation last night, what on earth is coming, what is the tribulation, and how it relates to the three peoples of the earth, the Jews, Gentiles, and the Church of God. Tonight we're going to look at the subject, why is the tribulation coming? What is the reason? There are three, actually three reasons for the tribulation, we'll look at those in just a moment. But tonight, I trust you have your Bible with you. And how many did your homework for tonight? Good. Boy, the answer. <laughs> wow. Boy, thank you, Lord. I bet some teachers would like to have that. <laughs> All right, this bow in prayer. Father, we come to you with rejoicing and praise and thanksgiving because you're here. You're in the house. And we thank you, God, you're in us by your Holy Spirit. You're in your word. And Father, we pray as we open this book tonight that your Holy Spirit will... Just take the truth that's embedded in these words and God plant that truth deep within our hearts that we may realize the days in which we live. And Father, that we might be watchmen. Mm -hmm. That God, we might be getting this message out to people who are going about, wandering from place to place, not having any idea what's going on. They know something's coming, but they have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. So we ask you, God, to help us to receive your word and apply it to ourselves and share it with someone else. And Father, we ask you to rebuke the enemy because he hates the word of God, especially when it comes to prophecy because he knows he has but a short time. So we ask you to, we ask you to rebuke Satan as we say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We resist you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is written, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So Father, we take authority over all the hindering spirits tonight, and claim victory in your word, and again we say, let us respond to your Holy Spirit. And we thank you in Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Would you take your Bible, please, and turn with me to the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter 13. We're going to be talking about why do we have the tribulation? What are the reasons for the tribulation? And tonight we want to look at uh, Genesis chapter 13. And my pages are sticking here. Genesis chapter 13. You have it? Say, I have it. That's an easy one to find. If you don't, say, wait on me. No, okay, you had to wait on me. All right, Genesis 13, let us look at verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. That's what God said to Abram. Now turn, please, to chapter 15. In chapter 15, we have a covenant being made between Jehovah and Abram. And what Abram was to do was to take the uh, animals that he had there, and he was to cut them in two and lay the pieces uh, 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 half and half on each side. And the idea was that the people who were making this covenant would pass between those uh, pieces of sacrifices. And they were saying, by doing that, they were saying, if I fail to keep my part of the bargain, then you can do to me what you did to those animals, to those, uh, the, the animal, the fowl, the birds there. You can do the same to me. And when the time came for this covenant to be made, Abram laid the animal pieces on both sides, and then a deep sleep came on him. And he fell asleep, and God himself walked between those pieces as if to say, I am the one who is going to keep this covenant. It doesn't matter what man says, it doesn't matter what God, uh, people do, I will keep this covenant with Abram. And he, he told him in that chapter, chapter 15, 
Yeah, as uh, um, again, my pages are sticking here. Chapter 15, notice what he says down in verse 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and then he names the tribes that were uh, uh, occupying that land. So he's given it. God said, I made the covenant, I walked between the pieces, I made that covenant in my own name in the book of Hebrews because there is no other name. And so God says, I am going to keep it. I have given it to you. Now in chapter 17, he's talking to Abraham. He's changed his name down to Abraham. And he's telling him he's going to have a, a, a son. And uh, in verse 19, God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, because uh, Abraham said, well, why don't we let Ishmael have this covenant? Do it through him. But God says, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at a set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. If anybody wants to argue with God, go ahead. The French are going to uh, try to pass a, they're going to vote on a resolution to uh, have a Palestinian state, we mentioned that last night, and an Israeli state, both in the same. The UN Security Council is going to try to pass a vote that's going to divide Jerusalem, as Whalen was singing tonight, to divide Jerusalem, that that city would be the headquarters for the Palestinian state and also for the Israeli state. Well, my friend, God says, I have given this land to Israel. And he established that covenant not only with Abraham, but later with Isaac and then with Jacob. And so what God says is going to come to pass. Amen. You can bank on yeah. it. Amen. So yeah. God blessed them. And they have that land. It's already theirs. I'll Amen. tell you something. Yep. I have a secret I want to share with you. The Israelis are there to stay. Amen. Amen. Yeah. People wonder, uh, what's going to happen to Israel? If the United States drops... <laughs> I almost have to laugh at this. Excuse me, Lord. Well, Sarah laughs, so I guess it's all right. <laughs> if the United States of America gives up Israel, what's going to happen to Israel? My Not friend, it. don't worry about that. Worry about what's going to happen to us if Amen. we give up Israel. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. They're there to stay. We don't have to worry about uh, you know them. They're yeah. there to stay. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen to us if we drop them. Right, right. Well, bless God. And so God established Israel, the Jews, to be his nation that would go throughout all the world and carry this message of the one God, the God Jehovah, to the world. But you know what happened? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, he said, if you disobey me, then I'm going to scatter you. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28, verse 64, I will scatter you all over this earth. And that's exactly what he's done. So the Jews have been scattered all over the world. But now they're coming back to Israel. And uh, in 1948, May the 14th, 1948, they established themselves as a state. And they were asking and looking and hoping and praying for at least 7 million people, 7 million Jews to occupy that land. And I believe last year they got that many. So there's exciting things happening here about the, with the Jews. Now let's turn to, to the book of Jeremiah. This was your homework, Jeremiah chapter 30. 
And as we think about uh, the Jews coming back, this is, uh, you know, an unusual thing here. The Jews returning to Israel. Jeremiah chapter 30, we're going to find out what uh, some of the purposes are of the, tribu of the tribulation, and this is the first one. First of all, the first reason for the tribulation is the refining of the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. The refining of the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Notice what God says. He calls this in verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob being Israel, they're going to have some trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right, let's go down to verse 10. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be at re in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. In the refining of the nation of Israel, we have, first of all, God's promises. God said, I will return you to the land. And this is exactly what God is doing. He is going out to return these people. If you look up in verse 3, For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Then you might turn over to chapter 32, and look with me at verse 37. 32, 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger, and in my fury, and in my great wrath. And I will bring them again into this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And there are other places, numerous other places, <coughs> where God says He is pulling, drawing, calling the children of Israel back. So it isn't that the Jewish people just suddenly woke up and said, I think I'll go back to Israel. No, God by His power, by His Spirit has drawn them back. He has right. brought them back because He has a covenant with them that that land deserves. I promise you, I will return you to the land. And that's what He's doing. Amen. And folks, we're living in that day. Amen. Wow, Amen. isn't that exciting? Amen. Here's Jeremiah writing about it, Daniel talking about it, John seeing it in his revelation, and we're living it. Amen. We're seeing it on the tube, you know. Amen. There they are in Jerusalem, and he was singing about it tonight. So we're living in these exciting times. And so God says, I will return you to rest. The Jewish people have been going over and over, stumbling, and he, he says in, in Deuteronomy 28, 64, wherever you go, I will scatter, you will not have any peace, you'll not have any rest. You won't be able to set your foot down and say, this is where I belong. God has put in them this unrest, but now He's bringing them back to rest. He's bringing them, He promised them return, He promised them rest, and He promised them restoration. Notice what He says in verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So God has brought them back into the land of Israel for rest and restoration. But they will not experience this rest and this restoration until they go through a refinement. Mm -hmm. They must be refined before they can rest. They must right. be refined before they can be restored. Mm -hmm. And that's one, uh, one reason here that God is showing us. Now let's go back down to verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord. His presence never left them. 
He was with them to protect them. He was with them to uh, provide for them. He was with them to draw them back. I will be with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though, listen, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, he says, I'm going to make a full end. Remember the, the statue that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw and the stone was cut out of the side and it came down and hit the feet of all these great kingdoms from Babylon down to the Antichrist kingdom. And the Bible says that stone hit that image and all those metals fell down as chaff and the wind came and blew them away. That's what's going to happen to the Gentile nations, my friend. He yeah. said, I have that, uh, I'll make a full end of all those nations that have scattered thee. Now, look at the next sentence. Yet will I not make a full end of thee. I'm not going to destroy mm -hmm. thee. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. God says, I have a refining for you. I'm not going to leave you unpunished. I have something that I need to do to correct you. Right. Now, let's go back to the book of Zechariah. It's almost uh, to the end of the Old Testament, the book of Zechariah. This is what God is going to do in the tribulation for the Jew, with the Jew. This is what the first reason. All right, Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. We'll just get a moment. Verse 8. All right. And it shall come to pass, in all the land, saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, the refining, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Can you imagine that? God has in his mind, when we see all the nations, and all the people, the United States of America included, all the things that are taking place in our, uh, our what we call current events, all of these things are leading up to one great thing, and that is the refining of Israel in the Holy Land, and ultimately the coming of Jesus Christ to reign over them. Amen. So when you see things happening, whether it be in America, Germany, whatever, think that it's all focused on Israel. Mm -hmm. God focuses His eye on Israel Everybody around them are going to be affected by what he's going to do with Israel. That's right. Now notice that. Now he is going to only bring one third. Going through that tribulation that we talked about last night for the Jew, the fiery persecution, the refining, only one third of that nation is going to make it through. What a terrible time that's going to be. And then if you turn back with me to Zechariah chapter 12, you find how they will come through that tribulation. All right, in chapter 12, verse 9, It shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come up against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm -hmm. God, in his grace and mercy, that one-third who come through that terrible burning fire of persecution of the Great Tribulation, 
When they come to them, they know what's going to happen. And God says in Zechariah 14, 2, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. They're coming down to destroy, annihilate the Jew. And what does God say? He will pour out his spirit of, of grace and supplication on them. And they'll call out, God, send the Messiah. And then Jesus will come, break through the sky. Yeah. Revelation chapter 19 tells yeah. us he will come and they'll behold him whom they pierced. Who is it? Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus, the Christ. The one they, they turn away. He's the one who's coming. And they'll turn and repent and receive him as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Wow. Amen. They're going to have to go through that. Now let's go back to that uh, scripture in Jeremiah. And you may be thinking and saying to yourself, well, that's pretty rough. You know, God is pretty rough to make people go through a fire like that until there's only one third left. You thought the Holocaust was bad. You thought some of the things that's going on with ISIS is bad. Why does God seem to be so, so severe in his wrath against Israel? And he says that. He said, I took you away in my anger and my wrath. Why? Here's the reason. Notice what he says as he shows us the reason, God's reason for the purpose for this uh, 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 refinement. Look at verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up Thou hast no healing medicines. What is he saying here? Why am I doing this? Why are you going through this fire like you have? Look at it. Your bruise is incurable. Your wound is grievous. There's no one to plead your case. What's he talking about? What does Isaiah 53, 5 say? He was what? He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. What's Amen. he saying? He's saying you rejected Jesus. You don't have anybody to take your bruise. You don't have anybody to bear your wounds. You don't have anybody to take the strike for your healing. You have nobody to plead for you. That is my case against you. You've rejected the Messiah. That's why you have to go through this. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Right. Where is your lawyer? Mm -hmm. Where is your advocate? You have no one to plead your cause. And when they said in Matthew chapter 27, I think it's around verse 24, 25, he said, His blood be on us and upon our children. They didn't realize what they were doing. That's right. And when they said, We'll have no man rule over us. He's no king for us. The only king we have is Caesar. What did they do? They turned away the very person who could save them from the wrath of God. Amen. Now let me ask you this question. If God does that for the people whom He has chosen to be His chosen people, if He is so, so severe in His punishment of the Jewish nation whom He's known over centuries, and they've confessed Him, and they've walked with Him, and they have a Bible talking about Him, and if they have rejected the Messiah and he treats them with that severity, where on earth do you think you're going to stand if you reject Jesus Christ? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yeah, right. yeah. People take this so matter of fact, you know, well, you know, one of these days I'll uh, just Jump in, you know. You cannot get saved unless the Holy Spirit 
draws you to Christ. Right. Amen. You yeah. know that? Yeah. All oh, this flipping stuff, you know. I'm the man upstairs, my co pilot. God and I have a thing going, you know. We have our own thing going. My friend, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Right, yeah. That's the only way you can get to God. He's That's the only right. one who can stand between you and the wrath of God. It's Him who hung upon that cross and said, My God, my God, why hast thou, thou forsaken me? We all, we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way, but the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. But if we reject Him, we refuse Him, then we're saying to God, I'll take my own judgment. And that means a lake of fire forever. Mm -hmm. You see, God doesn't send you to hell. You go yourself. Amen. That's right. That's right. You make the choice. That's right. Yep. He's done everything He can to keep you out of there. Mm -hmm. You make the choice, you go yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first reason for the tribulation is the refining of the nation of Israel. And what a refining that's going to be. Amen. Now the second, the second reason now, uh, there's more to this. You can read down through there. And he says, oh, let me just add this. Notice what he says. Verse 14, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. <laughs> yeah, you know, people, you know, really chum around. But they forget you when you're in trouble. <laughs> they seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquities, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Because of your sin, not because I, I, I delight in it. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Now, what's he saying here when he says, I have wounded thee as the wound of an enemy, with the wound of an enemy. An enemy doesn't just wound you. The enemy, if he wounds you, he wounds you for one reason, and that is that you'll surrender, and he won't have to kill you. So God's saying to them, I've dealt with you, I've tried to deal with you, that you would surrender before I have to come to this kind of punishment. But the thing I want you to see is here, the nations looking on, and they see this poor state of people, and they say, let's go take a spoil, and let's kind of prey upon them. And they're saying, we'll take it over. Now listen, we're living in that day right now when nations have seen Israel under oppression, even though God's blessing is on them and they've made that land prosper and no one's going to move them, but God's still going to take them through the fire. But they see that nation as a weak nation and they think they're going to get down there and take it. Like, uh, you know, up in Iran, the uh, president there was saying, we are going to annihilate the Jews. We are going to, and all is going on and on and on and on. And uh, God says, don't you touch them. You better watch out. And this goes for the United States of America. My friend, the nations who are against Israel, God will deal with himself. Amen. That's Amen. not our job. Amen. God will deal with him himself. It's like, uh, you know, some of you men, ladies as well, you go out hunting. Here's this big 12-point buck. Oh, man, I just like to see that hanging in my, in my house, you know. And you shoot that animal, and you hit it, and you know you've wounded it, but it goes over a little knoll and down the other side, and uh, you say, well, I, I can go get it, you know. Follow the way. He's wounded. He's wounded. He can't go too far. And you get over that knoll, and you're down a little bit, and there is that deer lying there, but there's another hunter there tying his tag on his horn. No. And you have one bullet left of your gun. <laughs> Temptation. <laughs> What would you do? That's my deer. I shot that deer. That's my deer. No, it's my deer. 
Oh, my friend, God says, I have my people here because I am going to judge them. I am going to refine them. And if you think you're going to come in and do something that I have commissioned to myself to do, I'm going to deal with you. Yeah. Stay out of it. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's why so many have suffered mm -hmm. right. in the wars that we've gotten into. We should just stay out. Right. God's big enough to take care of himself. Now, our time is slipping by, and I just will touch on the other two. The first thing is the refinement of the nation of Israel. The second is the rewarding of the wicked on earth. God says, you go by, let's go back to Isaiah, to this Isaiah chapter 13. And we spent time there on the Jews, but uh, I'm not sorry we did that, because uh, that's where the focus is. Isaiah chapter 13, and you can read that chapter and uh, see what he has to say here. Let's go down to verse 9, Isaiah 12, Isaiah 12, 13, I'm sorry, Isaiah 13 and verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven, the constellations thereof, shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible, and so on. Verse 13, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord God of hosts in the day of his anger. God is coming to, uh, to reward the wicked in their day. We don't have time to go into all this, but if you go to the book of the Revelation, you see that when the Revelation begins, as he opens the seals, in Revelation chapter 6, the Antichrist comes on the white horse. He's coming, and we'll talk about him tomorrow night, the Lord willing. Just where he comes from, who he is, and all that, we'll see that tomorrow night. But here he comes on his white horse. Then the red horse is war. Then the black horse is famine. The pale horse is death. Then there's persecution of all the believers who believe in Christ. And there's a great earthquake at the coming of Jesus Christ. I believe in the book of the Revelation that John is looking over the uh, years of the tribulation and is seeing these seals as conditions that will prevail during that seven year period. Then he's brought back to the beginning to see how this is all going to unfold under the seventh seal. And under the seventh seal you find that there are things taking place that have never happened on this earth before. <coughs> Bible says there are seven trumpet judgments. We can't get into each one of those, but I just want to ask you one question, and then you can follow it through yourself. If you were a leader of this world, and suddenly you found out that millions of people disappeared off this planet, and uh, the only explanation, biblically, is that Jesus Christ came like he said he would, and took them off in, in the rapture. But, you don't want to say that because you don't want to drive people to church and to the Bibles. You want to keep them from that. What would be the most logical explanation that you could give to the world why these millions of people have disappeared? Aliens. Aliens. I've heard a couple. Aliens. New Age. An alien invasion. That's what we've been taught. That's what we've been brought up to see. That's what's been... Uh, we've been sort of brainwashed to believe that's going to be, and I believe sincerely that will be the explanation given to the world. Now, just quickly, and to enforce that, at least in my thinking, and I believe God has shown me this, to enforce that, if you look at chapters 8 and 9 of the book of the Revelation, you find what happens there are the same kinds of tactics that would happen of a nation trying to overcome a city. Now they would understand it in the Bible as city fighting city, but a military strategy. 
And the first one is you have uh, the, the, the uh, trees and the grass are destroyed. There, that affects the, 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 the food supply of the earth. The second one, you have the uh, uh, seafood affected. Then you have the energy affected. Uh, the water affected, then the energy affected, then you come to that, you're breaking down the people of this planet, like whoever's up there, and, to, and tomorrow night we'll talk about the Antichrist and who his God is, whoever's up there is breaking this planet down. You know, they've been looking at us for a long time, you know that, haven't you? Oh, all over this place you've seen UFOs and aliens and who And so... They come to destroy us. The way they're going to do this is just like you would take a city. The military tactics, and you follow them. The food supply, and the water, uh, water supply, the energy supply. And then, brother, uh, they open up, the angel comes and opens up the bottomless pit, and here comes an air attack. All these locusts coming on people who will not be able to die. Can you imagine that? For five months. People will be tormented by these demonic locusts that will come out of the bottomless pit and sting people like scorpions for five months and they won't be able to die. Undertakers will be out of business for five months during the tribulation. You won't be able to kill yourself. You won't be able to take your life. That seems very strange. Well, we're talking about strange things when you get into the Bible. Then after that happens, the Euphrates River is opened and the angels let out millions of these uh, uh, demonic horsemen that come across the land and destroy, I think, one-third of the population. So what do you see? You see exactly what people do today in the military strategy. They affect food supply, water supply, energy supply. They have a fear that they put in men's hearts. We can't get into I wish we could get into that. And then they have the air attacks come to, that weakens the people, the air attacks, and what happens? The land army goes in. That's exactly the way we deal with Iran, isn't it? Right. Iran. Mm -hmm. So God, and I, I wish we could get into more of that right now. But then Satan will be cast down to the earth in the middle of that tribulation. And then will come the great tribulation. And this will be the time, uh, really, when the wrath of God is poured out, not only on the Jews, but upon the Gentiles. People, at the end of this time, they'll receive the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 16 tells us that at the end, God will send these uh, plagues of, of wrath upon them. And uh, they will break out in sores. And they, they, they'll be thirsty, they won't have anything to drink, God will give them blood to drink. And you just can't imagine. But my friend, you don't want to be here when that happens. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. And you can look, to, look just, just start Revelation chapter 6 and go right through and see what's going on to chapter 19. And you'll find out how God's going to reward the wicked. The wicked are not getting away with anything. Amen. The time has passed, so I just want to touch the last thing. Take your time, and this brother. Is, okay. Nobody's says, anxious to go home. He says, take my, <laughs> take my time. Where I preach, they don't have a clock, they have a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do appreciate you being here, and I appreciate well, there's so There's so much to cover here, we can't cover everything. The first thing is a refining of the nation of Israel. The second thing is the rewarding of the wicked on the earth. And the third thing, praise God, is the reaping of the last great harvest. Wow. And you can turn to, uh, just turn quickly to Revelation chapter 7. During this time, God is going to reap a great harvest out of this world. These will be people who basically have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. There will be Jewish people saved during this time. Gentiles who have never heard the gospel. Many people will be talking about this tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow we'll be talking about when will this tribulation start. But uh, 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 the thing is that uh, when this tribulation uh, starts, God is going to begin a reaping of the largest harvest in the end times. And... Uh, his messengers, 
Chapter 7, we won't read all this. Chapter 7, 144,000 Israelite men are going to be the ministers, the missionaries, during the tribulation period. Plus two witnesses in Jerusalem are going to be witnessing. So we have these two. Plus there will be people who will be saved uh, during the time and they'll be witnessing. But the greatest witness, I want to show you here, the greatest witness God of God's great love is in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6. Just like John 14, 6. Revelation 14, 6. God in His mercy, listen to me, God in His mercy is going to do this. Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. God is going to see that every person on this planet receives the gospel before the end comes. And that will be during the tribulation period. Now Jesus said this, Matthew chapter 24, 14, He said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations, in all the world as a witness to all nations and then shall the end come and so we're thinking well this is happening today with satellites and all that well, that's okay but god is going to see that during the tribulation period every person in every nation in every tongue is going to hear the gospel in his her in his or her own language and have the opportunity to be saved wow what a god we have so when you go back to chapter 7, you find this great harvest. There are his messengers, the messengers, the 144,000, the two witnesses, and this angel. But notice in verse 9, Revelation 7, 9, And I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, of kindreds, of people, and tongues, there it is, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and they cried aloud, Salvation to our God who sitteth on the throne and to the Lamb. Then the, John asked a question, and uh, one of the elders say, Who are these? So where do they come from? John answers it. Verse 14, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. People will be saved during the tribulation, but they'll be basically people who have never heard the gospel. So don't put it off, because there are people who hear the gospel now, We'll be talking about this tomorrow. Hear the gospel now, and they reject it and say, no, no, no. Well, when the rapture takes place, God's going to say to those people, that's it. Mm -hmm. He, God, will send them a strong delusion that they'll believe a lie. Why? Because they did not want to hear the truth right. and be Amen. saved. Amen. So Amen. he'll send them a strong delusion. They'll believe yeah. a lie, and that is that the Antichrist is a Christ, mm -hmm. and they'll be doomed forever. So don't say, well, I'm going to wait till the tribulation. Don't you wait. If you know, the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. You yeah. better get up here tonight. Amen. Say, you can't fool with this. Mm -hmm. And so these people who are saved, the messengers and then God's method. I close with this. Let's look at God's method. Notice what they said. These are they which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white with a good church membership. <laughs> what? Is that what you're talking about? Dan? Is that no. No? Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, made them white by giving an extravagant offering. No. <laughs> made them white by doing all the good works they could do. No. What's this? I better take my glasses off. <laughs> made them white. How? In the blood of the light. Amen. It's never going to change. That's, That's right. God's That's method. Right. It's God's method. It's always been God's method from the day he told Adam to sacrifice, uh, give a life of blood for uh, the sins of man. 
and went over to the Passover, blood for the sins of a nation, then blood for a family, and blood for the world. The Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. My friends, salvation will always be God's message, and that is the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Not anything we do, not of good in us, no boasting, we're saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. He Amen. took Amen. our place. Amen. The life is in the blood, so it simply means Jesus gave His life for your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wow! Isn't that something? Yep. Yeah. Isn't that something? He did that for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, thank God, we don't have to worry about the refining, we don't have to worry about the rewarding of the wicked. We don't have to worry about whether if we're going to get saved during the tribulation. My friend, if we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, it's all guaranteed, taken care of. Amen. 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 Yeah. God looks at you, and if you receive Christ, He doesn't see you. He sees the righteousness of Christ in you. He takes your books and your works and all these things, you know, and, uh, oh, they stink so bad, all those sins. And he pours the blood of the Lamb over him, and the angel goes, Pay him for what is the Lord? Woo! Amen. Yeah. It's all paid. Amen. Amen. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. It's a gift. Amen, yeah. Right. And the moment you try to work for a gift, the moment you try to earn a gift, the moment you try to do something to get a gift, it's no more a gift. Mm -hmm. You've earned it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Do you know him tonight? Amen. Have you asked him to come into your life? Are you trusting him for your salvation? The Jews, God said to them, you have no one to plead for you. But if you're saved, you have someone to plead for you. He's Jesus at the right hand of God. He'll plead for you. He's the one who's standing there in your place. But when you stand before God, and God will say, well, I don't know. he knows this. I don't know if I should let him in. He, Jesus said, he's one of mine. He's one of mine. Praise God, looks, yeah. God looks at you as though you never sinned a day in your life. Amen. Praise God. Because He put you in the righteousness of God. Christ. Mm -hmm. wow. Isn't that a wonderful message? Amen. Amen. Wow, yeah. we got to get this out. I'm going to ask you to take your hymn books again, please, and turn with me to 343. And maybe you're here, you've never received Christ. And tonight you would like to come and receive Him as your Savior. And tonight, You'd like to get right with the Lord. Maybe you've been a Christian and you just sort of gave up and gave in, gave in. And you'd like to come tonight and renew that <clears throat> commitment to Christ. You'd like to come and just pray for somebody that, you know, needs to be saved. 343, I'm going to ask you to stand, please. <coughs> just sing verses 4 and 5. <clears throat> if the Holy Spirit's drawing you, I don't have to come to the moment you step out, Jesus Christ will meet you before you get here. Amen. Whatever yeah. needs you have. We're just going to sing those two verses. This is what he'll do if you'll come to him. Sing verse 4. Just, just as I am. Yeah. Uh -huh.